So, <laughs> I do have something of a reputation when it comes to reviewing star citizen ships, reviewing designs, reviewing concept art, and looking at it and saying, you know, here are your problems. Here are your glaring, you know, errors that you've made. And over the years with Star Citizen, we have certainly seen ship ships evolve, and not just in the sense of you know artistic quality, but in 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 the sense of making sense in the universe, like adding cargo plates to a Valkyrie or something like that. We can learn from each past mistake. So without further ado, and because I've been loaned one thanks to my subscriber status, a review of the Anvil Carrick. Hold on. To your lily white butts. Now, first things first, some disclaimers. Star Citizen is an incomplete game. Tragically so. And there's a lot of systems that a ship interfaces with, a lot of components that aren't in the game or aren't in the game in a meaningful and functional way, the way that they're supposed to be. So Talking about things like weapon sizes or the amount of missiles that a ship carries, these are things that can be easily tweaked or balanced. And the feel of these things can change drastically from patch to patch to patch. So talking about these things at this stage in the game's development is not always a good way to gauge a ship's performance. You have to be honest, you have to be fair when you're talking about a ship, but I rely mostly at this point in talking about the basic functionality of the ship how does the ship feel how does the ship handle is it well laid out is it logical does it make sense are there glaring omissions in the ship's design things that should have been thought of and should be there but aren't these are the things that i generally tend to focus on and not you know so much worrying about what size a gun is or how many of them are there because there are many things that can come into the game during its development many things that are planned to come into the game during its development that could drastically alter the feel and the performance of these systems so to kind of take them at their face value when they're not fully implemented or even close to being fully implemented yet is unfair but with you know that being said now let's get into the ship itself the carrick what do i think of it now overall what is the carrick supposed to be it is a science and exploration ship that is used by the uee military and several civil civilian bodies within the universe it is a purpose-built exploration ship and in that it is a success. It is a self-contained exploration ship. It has a medical bay. It has a little repair bay for, a, I would presume, repairing or altering equipment. It has a drone bay. It has a little shuttlecraft bay that you can take out and land a shuttle on a planet or an asteroid or whatnot if the ship can't make it in there. It can carry cargo. It has these bays along its cargo area that can be swapped out much like the caterpillar in some future implementations so that is a good thing the cartography section which is fairly impressive to look at it lacks functionality it lacks any real functionality in the current game but you can see how this is going to be a key part of this ship of mapping out an entire solar system and you can see how you know this is a really good idea now i wish that it was closer to the bridge but it is what it is overall you know there are you know there are various instruments and various exploration devices within the ship and i wish that they were all clustered into one area like that cartography room or like the area behind the bridge that would be my personal preference but overall everything about this ship is more than good enough there is nothing that is so glaring that you know that i would i would be very disappointed with this ship or i would say get your money back go look at another exploration ship like the corsair which is you know exploration in air quotes um this is a, this is a good ship this is a solid ship that is my overall view of the ship but there are some parts that i want to kind of point out and say you know these are some really great things and there are some other things that 
you know, I would say that they're minor. And overall, that is my problems with this ship are minor. They are not huge. And I mean, though it isn't an appearance of a ship that is something that I would naturally gravitate to on a personal subjective note. Overall, I can see how it would appeal to many other players. And there's a lot of great things in this ship. One of the best things, one of the funniest and most ironic things about this ship, that is a good thing, that is a good thing, was when I was exploring the lower decks and I was looking at, oh, you know, here's the exploration hatches, you know, here's the cargo bays and you're seeing them right now in the lower end of the ship. You know, this is all really good. This is all really cool. You know, it all makes sense. I was kind of looking to see if there was a door latch, but luckily there wasn't because I had a mishap with the Caterpillar once and fell out into deep space while I was at Quantum and, you know, that's not a good thing. But overall, when I was exploring this area, I was like, damn, this is good. This is, this is good work. You know, artistically, very well done, well laid out, logical. And it was in exploring these areas that I kind of saw those panels and I was like, where do you keep the weapons? You know, where do you keep the weapons? Where do you keep the guns in the ship? And I thought, oh, you know what? I'm thinking with my Drake brain. I'm thinking with my Drake brain. It's just a, uh, you know, it's just a panel up against the wall. You know what it is? Is it's these panels in these recesses here. You probably can open them up. And sure enough, you can. And look at that, guys. Look at that. A military ship that has a place to store your weapons and your armor all in the same place. And not only that, just a place to store your weapons. Which, as we know, I guess it depends on the purpose of the military ship. You don't really need it on, you know, other ones. Hammerhead. <laughs> like, fantastic. That is such a good thing that is such a great thing and you know even at this stage in the game even if those weapon panels aren't fully implemented yet even if they don't function the fact that they're there right next to where you keep your armor is such a thoughtful thing and such a smart thing to do and there's a lot of ships in star citizen that unfortunately haven't had the benefit of that experience and you know are just not all that well laid out. This is a ship that benefits from, you know, having taken so long to come into uh, to come into the game, and that's you know one of the things that I've highlighted in the past when talking about ships is that these ships that are being put off, they are reaping the benefits of all the mistakes that were that existed and all the ships that have come before them but have yet to be rectified and as to when they're going to be rectified we don't know cig like a lot of game developers they like to play that little game where we don't acknowledge the mistake because if we even if we know the mistake is there we don't want to acknowledge it because when you acknowledge a mistake to players of your game as a game developer you incur a work debt that says that you now have to go back and fix this thing right and then you have to go okay well we made that mistake now we've got to you know we got to finagle this into our schedule and we got to get it done because if if we know the mistake is there we've admitted the mistake is there we're obligated to fix it and so cig likes to play that little game they're not the only game developer that does it but this is a ship that because of all these mistakes that have been made on other ships it has reaped the benefits it's not a perfect ship but it is a fantastic, you know, it is a fantastic statement to the end that CIG is learning from their mistakes. Unfortunately, there are some mistakes that CIG still hasn't learned from. And I'm going to highlight one of them. Now, this is ob obviously something that can be easily fixed. And it is, you know, it, it's not a fully like, oh, this is a page one rewrite, get rid of the ship, do it again. But the lighting system on the ship is insufficient. This is a known problem with a lot of ships in Star Citizen. So when you're trying to land this ship in the dark on uneven terrain, it is something of a nightmare. It really, really is. Trying to spot the terrain and strain your eyes to kind of see the relief of the terrain and go okay how can i plant this ship down safely and 
still have it oriented somewhat level on the ground can be a real pain in the ass. And CIG knows about this mistake and they have come out and discussed this since 3.0. They've talked about this problem, but whatever checkpoints that these ships are going through before they get released to the community, they are not, this is still not something that they're paying attention to or something that they're just not doing a great job of enforcing because the landing lights on this ship are pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. And that is something that should be fixed. It should be an easy fix and it should be implemented very, very quickly. Now, that being said, I do want to highlight one of the great strengths of this ship, and it does involve landing. And this is something that I actually talked about recently when I was talking about Elite Dangerous, is Elite Dangerous has a beautiful landing system in the game. You can either be autopiloted into a space station and then guided right down onto a landing platform if you decide to equip that uh, piece of equipment on your ship, or you can do it manually and there's enough feedback and there is enough general awareness of your position in three-dimensional space that you can do that and do that very easily. Star Citizen's landing sites unfortunately have this kind of land over a hole and then lower your ship down into the hole. What, the reason why nobody thought, hey, why don't we just make an elevated landing platform that you land on and then it retracts into, you know, into the station. The I don't know why anybody didn't think of that idea, but one of the great things about the Carrick is the handling on this ship at low speed, at high speed, in space, anywhere, the handling on the ship is so unbelievably crisp and so unbelievably great that even relatively difficult tasks like this, I mean, we're talking about a situation where it's actually easier to remove all the instrumentation and fly the ship basically freehand and eyeball it is actually easier than using the non-existent or non-functional instrumentation in your ship. This ship makes this so easy. It is so beautifully crisp in its handling. It's like a caterpillar. It is just fantastic. And not only that, not just landing, but flying in general with this ship is fantastic. A lot can be said negative about Star Citizen's flight model, but flying the Carrick, I wouldn't say it's the gold standard, but it is the point that CIG should strive for baseline when implementing any new ship into the game, because this unfortunately is not a trait that a lot of ships in Star Citizen share. Coaxing a landing like this out of some ships in Star Citizen is almost like trying to help a belligerent drunk girlfriend navigate down a flight of stairs. It's seemingly always one step away from disaster. And sometimes you know, that seems to be more of the medium case for a lot of these ships. I mean, some of them, it's, it's almost like trying to do the same thing for someone in the terminal stages of St. Vitus's dance. Now, oftentimes this is kind of attributed to the idea, the notion, the ideal that every ship has got to have a certain feel to it, a certain personality that you recognize and that you compensate for. And to a certain degree, that's true. And that, I mean, that is an important thing. It's a little thing, but it is a very important thing. The problem is, is that, you know, some of these ships really do tend to feel like either trying to navigate through heavy inebriation or a catastrophic neurological disorder. Ships like the Carrick handle just so beautifully and so crispy that it is just a joy to fly them. It's responsive. It doesn't oversteer. It doesn't understeer. It just has that, that beautiful kind of personality where you know you're flying a big ship. You know you're handling a big ship, but it responds to your control inputs not a few seconds late, not too, you know, and not too heavily at the same time. It's, it really is, this is the standard by which all of the big ships should be judged. Should they all handle exactly like it? No, but the way it responds to pilot inputs is what I'm talking about. And it, it responds beautifully 
instantly you know it's doing a thing it's not lagging behind you and it's not taking you too far it is perfect absolutely perfect in its handling a fantastic a fantastic flight model given what's what the current star citizen flight model is now aesthetics and interior i mean i often like and i often get a criticism and it's a fair criticism i i really don't care all that much about aesthetics i really don't you're never gonna like see a minion soldier video where i'm just like your your choice of color palettes here was positively sublime just let me tell you you know like i i really don't care to me is is it functional does it work does it make sense is it going to be a hindrance or a help these are the things that i generally you know concern myself with that being said the interior of the ship is fantastic it is perfect it gives you the impression of being on a spaceship without it you know it doesn't draw too heavily from the other ships in the game it has its own personality it has its own uniqueness it is not a reclaimer it is not a constellation you know these of course are ships from different manufacturers but they don't all kind of blend together as they do in some video games they have a very unique personality all their own and this ship does have that when you look at places like the little repair bay the medical bay you know the you know the sleeping bunks and all of that as I was exploring all this and discovering it for the first time, I was just, I was, there was nothing that I looked at and went like, oh, that's a, that looks terrible. Oh, that's a mistake. Everything is not only just logically laid out, but it makes sense to your brain logically as this is a part of a starship. It's not, you know, you don't look at something and go like, oh, this is, you know, this just doesn't feel right. This is out of place. And that's one of the things, you know, when you're talking about ships in CIG, I can see where the artists do make the mistakes that they make. Like, for instance, in this room, I feel like there should have been more computer panels along the wall for other exploration activities, but a minor thing, a minor thing. Overall, that was the only space in the entire ship that I kind of went like, eh, you could have done that a little bit better. But overall, like the entire ship was... It was fantastic. It made sense. It was a joy to travel through. And not only was it like a joy to travel through and did you feel like, oh, yes, I really am on a spaceship. A lot of some of the ships that I really like have some kind of glaring like WTF moments in them. Like the, the central elevator and the forward elevator and the reclaimer to get from the front to the back of the ship. That's kind of a hassle. But if I wanted to get down to the cargo area in the Carrick here it is it's just a simple elevator and it takes me right down to the cargo area and from here I can walk right down and out the front of the ship so if I'm delivering a crate it makes it really easy and th like that's kind of one of the things that I think this is where CIG is learning and this is where you know form and function have kind of met and they've learned their lessons because you sit this ship next to the starfare in terms of interior design both of them very skilled implementations very beautiful physical design but one of them makes sense one of them is good one of them is a joy to travel through one of them isn't a maze you know the starfare next to the carrick how does the starfare even exist in this universe you know how can you possibly have engineers that stupid at misc and yet still compete against a manufacturer like Anvil when they can produce something like this that makes total sense. Even Drake can figure out a ship interior. How can Misk not do it? You know, this is, you know, this is the sign of that growth, of that development internally at CIG is now it's like, oh wait, it has to make sense. And with each lesson learned, you can see it implemented in the later ships and the Carrick is just benefiting from so many it's got a lot of mistakes to benefit from and it has and that's the great thing about the carrick is it has weapon sizes can change 
engine performance, you know, quantum speed, things, you know, shield performance. These are all things that can be adjusted and we're going to see them adjusted many times, not only by ourselves through this, you know, the components we can implement on our ships and, and install, but not only that, but, you know, there are so many changes that can come to these things, but these basic core structural components of these ships that make them easy to live in, easy to work from, you know, easy to fly, things like that. These are what makes great starships. And the Carrick is a great starship. So when you're looking at a ship like the Carrick, even if the ship isn't your particular cup of tea, it is obviously not mine. I'm not looking for an exploration starship, but look at this thing and think that if this is all the stuff that CIG has now implemented on a, on a flyable, somewhat functional ship, you know, there's many of the functions in the ship. I'm not saying that as a dig. Many of the functions in the ship are simply not implemented yet. That's just reality. But if you think about this, you know, you, yeah, everyone's like, oh, I want my, you know, I want my Polaris. I want my Nautilus. I want my this. I want my that that still hasn't been built yet. Think about how much better those ships are going to be having experienced these ships, having CIG built, you know, them going forward, learning their lessons and building ships like this. Yeah, you know what? There are some minor mistakes and maybe some flaws within this ship. But what does that mean for the next ship that's going to benefit even more down the line? Ships like the Polaris and the Nautilus are looking ever increasingly attractive when you take into account things like this so overall for a ship that feels like something that you would love to fly in i mean i was doing cargo missions in this thing and i would go back and do more cargo missions even solo in this thing just because it was such a joy to fly and it was so responsive even with the landing difficulties so much fun to fly for the bigger ships out there in the Star Citizen universe, especially things like the Polaris and the Nautilus, things are really looking up. And if you own an Anvil Carrick, to a certain degree, I only have it because it's a subscriber loaner, but to a certain degree, in some small way, I do envy you a little bit. Thank you for watching. So, 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 so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.